protein intake isn't as simple as looking at protein in grams per day. That source really does matter in regards to bone health and that we should consider moving forward looking at different protein food sources and perhaps not just recommending greater protein intake for better bone health among individuals, but concentrating on those that have the most beneficial effect with bone, such as low-fat dairy products. Kelsey Mangano led the Framingham Offspring Bone Health Study, which she presented at the Second World Yogurt Summit during the 2014 Experimental Biology Meeting. The study is unique because it didn't focus on proteins individually. It considered them as an integral part of the diet. And we did find differential associations between protein patterns or food intake patterns and bone health where individuals who were clustered um, or had their greatest proportion of protein intake from processed food or red meats had lower bone density, significantly lower bone density compared to individuals whose highest percentage of protein intake was from low fat milk uh, dairy sources. And this was significant at a measure of the hip, so at the femoral neck bone density. The so-called diet score confirmed that animal and milk proteins are high quality proteins. The high quality proteins which score is over 100 are almost entirely the animal proteins. The uh, milk proteins are right at the very top, but um, beef and all the meat proteins are also uh, far superior in terms of the diet scores to most of the vegetable proteins, soy being the highest, which is still at the lower end of the, what would be called the high quality protein. So, Fundamentally, uh, the proteins fall into two groups, the high quality and the low quality, and the low quality being things such as chickpea and wheat and uh, uh, peanut uh, protein. This is critical in populations like the elderly, who appear to require more proteins and essential amino acids to build muscle tissue. Now, in terms of quality, we know that essential amino acids are fundamental. And among the amino acids, then it depends on the mechanism you are tackling. For instance, we know that the uh, synthesis of IGF-1, both at the liver level, but maybe at the peripheral tissue as well, is stimulated by some in amino acid, specifically by the aromatic one. And those aromatic are present in cheese and in dairy products. For supplying the planet with high-quality proteins, it appears wise to increase the productivity of dairy cows, whose feed is practically inedible for humans, and at the same time reduce the number of cows bred. Uh, at the moment, there are about 350 million cows in the world, uh, producing on average less than 3,000 kilograms of milk uh, per year. If you double that, you can do with far less cows, and, that, and lesser cows generate lesser uh, greenhouse gases, uh, so increasing productivity is probably the most important uh, mitigation strategy for uh, uh, protecting the ecosystem.